While the BYU basketball program was falling up at the Huntsman Center, BYU football got a big win on the recruiting trail with Ignacio Tupo announcing he'll be a member of the BYU football program. How big is that commitment? What can BYU fans expect from this young man? And what could it mean for BYU as they close in on the early signing window? We're talking about all of that on today's show. You are Locked On Cougars, your daily podcast on the BYU Cougars. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everybody? I'm Jake Hatch, your host here on Locked On Cougars, your resident BYU insider. Thank you for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. Thank you to all of you who are everydayers with us right here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Today's show is brought to you by our friends over at Prize Picks. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on college. Use the promo code locked on college for a first deposit match up to $100. It's all courtesy of your friends at Prize Picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. By way of introduction, for any of you who may be checking us out for the very first time, this is your original daily podcast focused on all things BYU sports. And let's dive right in uh, on BYU. Now, we'll talk about BYU basketball here in a little bit, but I want to start off with the good news, and that was Saturday night. Ikenasio Tupo announced that he is going to be a member of the BYU football program and offensive tackle from uh, Palo Alto, California, with the Palo Alto High School. 6'6", 290 pounds, uh, 86 rating from our friends over at 24-7 sports. Sports, a composite rating for 247 sports of 85.78. So very solid prospect. And frankly, this is a big, big pickup for BYU because Tupo was one of the uh, big commits BYU was still hoping for on the recruiting trail. There are a lot of people out there that thought that he would end up at Washington or a number of other programs. He had finalists, including Utah, Arizona State, and Arizona in his group, and ultimately picks BYU. And I think this is a signal for BYU that they're doing some good things on the recruiting trail, none bigger than really getting an offensive lineman of Tupo's uh, caliber All the while, you still don't have an offensive line coach in place. We talked about last week how I'm hearing that TJ Woods is all but certain to be BYU's new offensive line coach. That won't necessarily be done until after Georgia Southern, the program he is currently coaching for, finishes their bowl game. Uh, So the thing is, BYU is still doing a lot of good work on the recruiting trail and bringing this young man in. He's very excited to be a part of the BYU football program. Uh, I'm currently in communication with him. We're hoping to get him on the podcast this week to talk about why he picked BYU, but I can tell you from the short conversation that we've had, he's very, very excited to be a member of the BYU football program, and for good reason. This is a kid who's got an opportunity to come in and play right away for BYU. You already are losing uh, Kingsley Suomati'ia. Uh, Paul Miley is out of eligibility. We don't know the status of Connor Pay and or Braden Kime quite yet. And who knows uh, what else might happen along that offensive front. Could a guy or two decide they ultimately do want to transfer out of the football program? That is still on the table. The transfer window is still open until early January. So there is still a long ways to go in terms of settling what the roster is going to look like going into the winter semester for BYU. But I can tell you this much. Tupo is going to come in with the thought that he's going to be able to compete for playing time right away. And there's no reason to think that he can't do that because He's got great size. In fact, elite size. 6'6", 290 as a high school athlete. That's exactly what you want in a prospect coming in. He's not going to have to come in and gain weight or he's not going to have to come in and uh, hopefully bulk up a little bit to play. He's got the requisite size to come in and play right away. And the nice part is he's going to have an opportunity to compete for playing time early on in his BYU career. Uh, Now, the other thing that I was uh, interested by was a comment that he made uh, to Brandon Huffman from 24-7 Sports. Uh, He said this, uh, in terms of other recruits, I have a good feeling that could actually help recruit many players to join me and help build up BYU in the ranks. I've already helped another major Bay Area recruit join on board, and he'll be announcing sometime soon, so I know I could definitely get others on board, unquote. Now, uh, that's a little bit of a tip off when he says another major Bay Area recruit. Well, a number of us, we've talked in the past about a kid by the name of Naki Tuakoy. He's a defensive uh, end prospect, 6'4", 220, 230 pounds out of Fremont Senior High School in Oakland, California. Fits with the Bay Area. He is a four-star prospect, rated 90 by our friends at 24-7 Sports. The composite ratings have him in 89.75, so he's a consensus four-star prospect. And he would be a major prospect that BYU very well 
well, would do well to land. This is a kid that I think would uh, come in and immediately bolster BYU's pass rush and immediately offer them um, some extra oomph off of their defensive end spots, uh, backing up guys like Tyler Batty and or Isaiah Banyal, or in uh, in some cases, maybe Naki Tuakoi comes in and immediately takes over the starting job at defensive end. It's, it's been that paltry of an output from BYU's defensive end, so why couldn't you sell this kid on the thought that he could come in and be the guy right away for the Cougars? So uh, some good things happening for BYU. In addition to, according to reports, they had uh, at least two quarterbacks uh, from the transfer portal visiting BYU you over the weekend one of them was sam levitt the former four-star prospect has connections to the byu football program via his father and older brother uh sam is looking for a new football program and does have an offer from byu and then Braden shager if, if, if i'm pronouncing that correctly he's the quarterback from hawaii i uh, put up some monster numbers this past year for the rainbow warriors he reportedly according to 24 7 sports and on three sports uh, visited byu yesterday sunday so kind of an interesting day to visit byu but really this time of year when it comes to the transfer portal you've got to fit guys in when they're able to do it these are guys that are making multiple visits to programs two in a day at, at, at certain program at certain times trying to get a feel for where they're going to land because they have to make a very quick decision in very short order so byu is trying to fit them in whenever they have time to come in is sam levitt or Braden Jager are they the options that byu wants a quarterback TBD. We also have a word out there that Taylor Green is expected to visit BYU in the next week or so, or at least that was a, as of midweek last week. He was supposed to visit BYU among a number of other programs in that ensuing week. So has he already visited BYU? Is it on the docket for early this week? TBD. But I'm getting a better feeling about BYU and their chances leading up to the early signing day window, which opens up in just over a week's time. And we'll talk about why as we continue on right here. Unlocked on Cougars. A quick word, though, on our friends over at eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride-or-die vehicle alive, my friends. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride-or-die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed for your ride every time or you get your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you'll need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com, my friends. That's ebaymotors.com. Once again, eligible items only, exclusions apply, and eBay Guaranteed Fit is only available to U.S. customers. Uh, also, today's show is brought to you by our friends over at UCCU. Now, UCCU has been working with us for months now, if not actually years now. The best part of UCCU is they have the Learn and Earn feature, part of the UCCU mobile banking app. It is paying your entire family to learn about money. Kids look to parents to become more financially literate, and parents don't always have the right answers. That's where Learn and Earn steps in, my friends. It breaks down those financial topics into fun, bite-sized educational, educational lessons and games featuring things like quizzes and trivia. And every time a family member completes a topic, they earn points, can be accrued, and be redeemed deemed for gift cards to stores like Amazon, Apple, Sephora, Walmart, Nike, and many, many more. There's age-appropriate content for every member of the family who can compete against one another and track their progress on leaderboards. The best part is Learn and Earn is available inside the UCCU mobile banking app, so you can play at any time, anywhere. And of course, the more you play, the more you learn, and the more you learn, the more you earn. Simple as that, my friends. It's all courtesy of Utah Community Credit Union and the Learn and Earn feature. It's part of their award-winning Be Money Smart Youth Banking program, helping kids, teens, and parents have fun while becoming more financially literate together. It's all courtesy of your friends over at UCCU. Love where you bank. Thank you once again for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. Thank you to all of you uh, for tuning in. I want to remind you guys that Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus their national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to our first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. And also, while you're at it, make sure you subscribe uh, to the uh, the. Uh, the subtext community we have going here on Locked On Cougars. What it is, it's a direct line of communication with me, giving you insider tidbits of what I'm hearing on the BYU front, giving you updates on when uh, episodes are coming out, answering questions. It's a really, really fun feature. You have a 14-day free trial to see if it's the right option for you before you have to uh, pay anything. It is a $4.99 charge a month after that. Uh, would love for you guys to be a part of it. We're nearing the 40 subscriber mark, and uh, we're uh, building something uh, to just kind of uh, – 
uh, be kind of a, just a part of this community. So if you want to be a part of it, uh, you can find it in the show notes, whether you're listening to this on YouTube or get it wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, you can join the subtext community right now and uh, be a part of a new venture here on the podcast. All right, let's talk about why I'm feeling bullish about BYU on the recruiting front right now. The reason I'm feeling bullish about BYU, uh, simply put, is BYU is starting to generate some momentum. The Some of the conversations I had with folks over the weekend uh, are indicating that BYU is doing a very good uh, job on the recruiting trail. Now, what that means is they're selling themselves very well to these prospects is it going to result in a, a mass uh, landslide of a uh, top rated talent coming to BYU TBD, because we've already seen Rod green, a highly thought of uh, offensive line prospect from the junior college ranks, Coffeeville college out there in Kansas. He announced he's going to Purdue. And I'm like, well, what in the world's happening? Because there were some uh, rumblings that uh, BYU was very much in the mix for him, but uh, the Boilermakers went out in the end for a guy like Rod Green. Now, BYU is not going to win every uh, recruiting battle. Let's be very clear about that. But BYU had a number of athletes on official visits over the weekend, and the hope is BYU can close on a number of those guys. They did close with Ikanasio Tupo. Now, he was not on campus for an official visit over the weekend. He made his official visit late, uh, actually earlier on in the summer uh, and felt like BYU is where he wanted to be. But I think B as you start to see more and more of these guys announced for BYU, it puts pressure on other guys BYU is chasing uh, to join the fray. And that's the biggest thing BYU needs to start to generate when it comes to the recruiting process is to start to generate some momentum. Show that guys uh, that BYU is going to land some bigger names. Ignacio Tupo is a good start. You land a guy uh, the caliber of Naki Tuakoe, a four-star prospect. That's going to make a couple of of people kind of look at it and say, Hey, what, what's going on here? The BYU's got going on now. They already have a pretty solid recruiting class overall. Uh, speaking of BYU, but they can only get better. It feels like, because the thing about this BYU has been competing for far too long with a G five type roster and hoping to play high level power five football. You can't be in the recruiting rankings, checking in in the seventies or the eighties in terms of the overall rankings of four prospect classes. And, Obviously, the star ratings are an inexact science, but they're getting better every single year as they have to refine uh, their process for this. But BYU, the 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 rankings have been in the 70s and the 80s. Uh, they're looking like they're going to push towards the 60s, if not the 50s this year. And if they can close well, you push yourself inside the top 40. That's where BYU's got to live in these recruitings in this new era of Power 5 football. We saw last year BYU's depth was absolutely on display or the lack thereof, I guess I should say, when it came to the injuries that hit guys like a Ben Bywater or any other myriad of positions, uh, whether it was uh, uh, along the offensive line, the running back position. The nice part is where positions where BYU had strength. Think of the running back position, for example. They brought in Aiden Robbins, thinking that him and Deion Smith could really be a nice tandem for BYU. And who knows? Maybe LJ Martin, uh, being a four-star prospect in his own right, could make a push for playing time as a freshman. Well, uh, come out of the gate, Aiden Robbins is injured. Uh, Deion Smith is not ready to really carry the torch for BYU because that's not really his style as a running back. So what does LJ Martin do? He lives up to his four-star billing and steps in and really, really uh, had a nice season for BYU. Now, he did pick up his own injury uh, later on in the season. That allowed Aiden Robbins to come to prominence as the final stands of the season played out. But the nice part is you're looking at the future there and saying, okay, the running back position was able to hold up under some of the injuries it dealt with. And, and I obviously the running, running backs uh, did not produce at the level they would like to and BYU's offense needed them to. But the nice part was there was depth there. Other positions did not have that quality of depth, and you need to see an increase of bringing those guys into the into the program. Defensive line in particular, a guy like Naki Tuakoi would be a phenomenal pickup for the defensive end position. I'm hoping BYU can land some guys along the interior of the defensive line, guys like Tonga Lolahea, who apparently was on a visit this past weekend for BYU in his own right. He's a big defensive tackle type, and BYU needs some defensive tackles to pair alongside a guy like David Latu, who was a pretty nice pickup last year in the recruiting cycle. It's just going to take some time really for BYU to fill out the adequate depth that they need to compete uh, on an every game basis. It feels like in the power five ranks, but this recruiting class is the start of that. BYU has been trying to add quality depth via their rec uh, recruiting classes in the past two years as they geared up for the big 12. But now that they've been through that quote unquote campaign, that that battle of a power five schedule, they've been through an entire year of uh, combating a 10 straight uh, game stretch of power five football. 
I think they learned a lot about what they need and what they need to target in the recruiting process. And getting a guy like Iki uh, Tupo to uh, to commit to BYU is a good start. You add Naki Tuakoi. You start to add some of these other big names that are out there on your board as you get closer and closer here to early the early signing window would go a long way to helping BYU generate some momentum and maybe make some other guys reconsider. Maybe I should be looking a little closer at what BYU's got going on here. And maybe I want to be a part of that and get an opportunity to go and play early and be a part of a Power 5 football program and kind of get in on the ground floor and help them build this up. That's the biggest thing BYU's got to have going for it. And the hope is that it will pay off. The hope is that BYU will find uh, some guys who are willing uh, to come in and be a part of the build for BYU here in the Big 12 Conference. It's not going to be easy because, trust me, there are so many suitors out there for these young men uh, that are chasing them in the transfer portal, the junior college ranks, the high school level. All of them are being inundated on an everyday basis. And the thing is, BYU is doing trying to do more with less. I'll say it once, I'll say it again. BYU, the next kind of realm of where I'd like to see them invest in this football program is on the recruiting front. You cannot subsist in the Power 5 ranks having just three full-time staffers on the recruiting front. Yes, you have a number of student staffers. Uh, they're BYU students who are doing a, a, as good a job as they possibly can as part-time workers uh, working 20 hours a week, helping out with the recruiting process. But when programs like a Utah State, who you consider to be little brother, have more full-time recruiting staffers than you do, but you're a Power 5 football program, that's got to change. And I'm assuming BYU will, is either EA aware of it or they're soon to be aware of it and will uh, be doing what they can to address it. It should have already been addressed already, uh, addressed already, but the hope is that they will address it in short order and that can continue to help BYU build. Also, the other thing about this is BYU is already losing staffers uh, to Bronco Mendenhall's staff. Now, a losing guy like Patrick Hickman, I'm not surprised by because Patrick worked for Bronco at BYU, made the transition to Virginia with Bronco. He is one of the quote unquote Bronco guys. So when Bronco made a call to him and said, Hey, you want to come join my staff in New Mexico? Hey, Patrick Hickman was off and uh, ready to join Bronco's staff. So you wish him nothing but the best. But BYU needs to invest, it continue to invest in the off field staff, especially when it comes to the recruiting department. Because the biggest thing is a lot of these young men, and I've heard it from multiple people, is that at times BYU, the is stretched too thin with the recruiting uh, staff as well as the assistant coaches. And they have other programs out there that are communicating with these young men on an everyday, if not multi-times a day, uh, just loving them up and letting them know they're thinking about them. That type of thing. And that goes a long way to building relationship, relationships with these young men. What I've been told is at times, BYU can go days, if not a week, between communication with some of these guys, whereas other programs are having their recruiting staffers hit them up uh, like literally daily, if not more more than once a day uh, to make sure that they are always on the mind of these young men. That That is something BYU's got to be uh, obviously addressing and hoping to change. But hey, if you can close well in this recruiting uh, cycle, the early signing window, and obviously you'll have another month beyond this before the actual national signing day in early February, it would go a long way to helping, I think, build and generate some momentum that BYU can benefit from. But you got to go out there and hopefully close well here. Win some of these recruiting battles. Like I said, you're not going to win all of them, but a guy like Ignacio Tupo is a good start there. Land Naki Tuakoi, land a guy like Tonga Lolahea, bring in uh, Tei Nakua, go get some of these bigger names that remain on the board and show that BYU can be a place that guys want to be. And that's going to make other recruits say, okay, What's BYU got going on? I might want to take a little closer at what Kalani Satake and his staff are building. And hopefully that will continue to kind of just become a self-feeding machine. You start to add that momentum and guys, more and more of them uh, want to be drawn in and join this football program because depth, 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 talent and depth is what you need if you're BYU. And the hope is, like I said, that they can uh, get some get some of that uh, going in to early signing window just over a week uh, away as it opens up. And obviously, BYU looking to ink uh, a large majority of the guys already have committed and other guys are hoping to have committed here in the next week or so, whether it's via the junior college transfer portal or high school ranks as they look to close out the vast majority of their 2024 recruiting class. All right. Uh, enough football now. Let's talk a little BYU basketball. Obviously, the Cougars falling to the Utes up at the Huntsman Center on Saturday evening. I was there. Uh, thousands of you were there as well. It was an incredible environment. BYU does lose, suffering their first loss of the season. What does that mean for Mark Pope and company? We'll talk about all that as we continue on right here 
on Locked On Cougars. Let's get a quick word in on our friends over at Prize Picks, though. Of course, Prize Picks wants to help you guys out, have some fun in the daily fantasy sports space. They are the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. They are the easiest, most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports, and it's just you versus the numbers. Instead of battling thousands of other players, including pros and sharks, you pick more or less on two to six players' stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. It's simple as that, my friends. The best part is you can win up to 25 times your bet amount, so 10 bucks become $250 in short order. Uh, you can do it all within the comfort of the Price Picks app, uh, two taps, and you're locked in. You can do it in less than 60 seconds. The best part is they're letting you have fun with both football and basketball right now with uh, both seasons overlapping right now. Uh, you also can play against some of the bigger names that are part of the Price Picks community, including rapper Meek Mill, comedian Andrew Schultz. Now you can find community plays under the Promos tab of the app to view entries from some of the biggest names in the Price, Click, uh, Price Picks community each week and have some fun on that front as well. So get on it, my friends, and join it today. The best part is they are, it's really simple to play. You can make your picks, submit your entry in less than 60 seconds. They have quick withdrawals, easy gameplay, and enormous selection of players and stat types are what makes Price Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app out there. So visit pricepicks.com slash locked on college today and get started. Use the promo code locked on college for a first deposit match of up to $100. You heard that right. Go to pricepicks.com slash locked on college. Use the promo code locked on college for a hundred dollar deposit match up to $100. It's all courtesy of your friends over at Price Picks. Daily fantasy sports made easy. Thank you once again for making a lot. Thank you for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day here on a Monday. Hoping you have a fantastic start to your week. Uh, getting closer and closer to Christmas time. And uh, like I said, I, I would encourage you guys, if you've not done so already, please join the subtext community. And also, uh, just another plea. I say I don't say this enough. Uh, please continue to subscribe, rate, review the show. Uh, help us build this community just uh, via subscribing, uh, leaving us a note on the podcast uh, apps out there, whether it's Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Uh, those uh, help the algorithms uh, love us up a little bit and share it with other BYU fans. So thank you in advance for your support on all those fronts, and thank you for doing that. All right, so BYU basketball, number 14 team in the country, uh, suffers their first loss of the season, losing to their arch rival, the University of Utah, 73-69 to on Saturday. Uh, let me start off by saying this. The environment inside the Huntsman Center was absolutely elite. Uh, so props to you guys. I would say the split of red to blue in that was probably 65-35, maybe 60-40. The upper bowl was essentially all BYU fans from what my vantage point on Media Row. Uh, but it was awesome. Awesome to see you all there. Uh, I got to give a shout out to Sam Emery. Sam, I apologize. I did not get to talk to you uh, for that long. I know you uh, shouted over to me. I was talking uh, with some other friends, but uh, guys like you are why I love a part of us being uh, out there and having you guys recognize me, even though I don't think I'm that recognizable, but nonetheless, uh, big ups to you, Sam, and thanks for reaching out. But nonetheless, a tough loss for BYU because the Cougars really in this game, uh, it felt like from the start, BYU was going to get blown out. I think many of you uh, sitting there in the stands probably looked at it, man, that's a rough start. Gabe Madsen hits like three threes in the first five minutes. And it really felt like things were teetering a little bit for BYU. But the Cougars, uh, true to form, continue to battle back. Now, had you had a guy like Noah Waterman avoid going 0 of 7 from the field, 0 of 6 from 3, Trevin Nell goes 0 of 4 from 3. Those two players in particular, Trevin Nell and Noah Waterman, have been shooting the three ball extremely well. They go a combined 0 for 10. BYU loses this game by four points. Uh, that could have made a big difference. The other thing about this is the free throws. BYU's got to make more than 10 of 18 free throws. And by the way, they closed making five of six. They were five of 12 uh, before uh, they finished, like I said, finishing uh, with five uh, uh, makes in the final six attempts. But shooting 55.6%, missing eight free throws in a four-point loss. Yeah, you can point to a lot of things, but that's one in particular you look at and say, man, that's that's a big missed opportunity for BYU in this game. The crazy thing about it was with about, I think it was like, was it 39 seconds to go? Uh, Utah fouls Ali Khalifa, and then I get a huge, I mean, huge three from the top of, of the of the arc and BYU suddenly is down uh two points with 9.1 seconds to go I uh, get that ball inbounded and Dallin Hall tried to make a move and then just loses the handle and the ball goes out of bounds that's a disappointing way to lose that game because it felt like BYU had garnered some of the momentum at that point and had they been able to push that to overtime maybe just maybe they're able to go over the hump and get out of there with the victory but alas 
tough loss for BYU. They shoot 36.6% from the field, 23.3% uh, from three. And Mark Pope said it after the game. Uh, this is one of those games you're going to learn about, okay, if we're going to shoot that many threes, there are going to be nights where we don't make as many of them. They only made seven of their 30 attempts. They got up the requisite 30 attempts that Mark Pope apparently wants his team to hoist up. But like I said, when you only make 23% of them, it's going to be a hard night. The one thing I will say for this, though, this was the only true road game of BYU's non-conference slate. And having, what was it, I think is it 15,000 fans that can fit in the, in the Huntsman Center, whatever it is. Those environments are what BYU basketball is going to face every time they play in the Big 12 Conference. It doesn't matter where you play, West Virginia, Iowa State, Kansas State, Texas Tech any of these programs that BYU is going to go up against on the road, that's the type of environment BYU is going to experience. They are going to benefit from this loss to Utah. Yes, I know it stings. Yes, I know BYU could have played better. I know they could have made some more shots and ground out a win. Losing to Utah always sucks. I, I get all of that. But BYU is going to benefit from this because that's the type of environment they're going to have to learn to play in and thrive in because that's what the Big 12 is going to require of this team. The other thing about this was, in this game, it showed that BYU is much more reliant on Fuseni Traore than many of us were led to believe because uh, the, the size advantage that Utah enjoyed in this game was very evident in the first half. They played a high-low game, switching BYU's guards onto their big men, just absolutely dominating on the interior. Brandon Carlson, Kaba Keita, um, who was the other guy, Lawson Lovering. They made life miserable for BYU, and BYU has to find a way to be able to combat that. Uh, I don't know when Fuseni Traore coming back. Everything I'm hearing is he's out until conference play begins. So the earliest you're probably going to see him is in early uh, January, but it's a hamstring injury. And Mark Pope said it himself. I asked him the question after uh, the game uh, two games ago. I asked him after the game. He said, the hope is that uh, he'll be able to wake up one day and he'll be good to go. But it's very tricky with hamstring injuries. But this was a game against Utah that showed the BYU's lack of size without Fuseni Traore in the lineup was glaring. Frankly, it was glaring, and BYU needs him back as soon as possible. The other thing about this is you got to have a guy like Noah Waterman be able to play better in circumstances like this. He cannot fade away in, in, in big games like this because, like I said, this is the environment that – this is what BYU is going to face game in and game out in Big 12 play. It's going to be happening at home because uh, BYU – it doesn't play anybody out there. And BYU draws 13 or 14,000 people on any given night. That's the thing about this. They're going to go up against Denver on a Wednesday. They play Georgia State on Saturday. I'm fully expecting 14, 15, 16, 17,000 people uh, there for both of those games. The thing about this, BYU will have to learn to be able to play in road environments like this. I think it was very beneficial for BYU to learn, hey, we can hang tough even if we're having our worst shooting night of the season to date, and we still found a way to get ourselves into a, win a potential winning slash tying position with 9.1 seconds to go. Yes, the possession did not go the way it should have gone. I would have given the ball to Jackson Robinson. That's the way I would have designed it. But nonetheless, BYU will learn from this. So, yes. Be down on the loss to the Utes. I get it. Utah fans want nothing more than to shove your face in the ground and uh, and make you feel like crap. But it, it's going to benefit this BYU basketball program to have this loss. BYU is not going to drop out of the top 25 with just one loss. They may drop back to around like 20 in the rankings, but they're still going to be a ranked team. And here's the thing. There's no reason to think BYU is not going to be going into conference play 12-1 and one on the season. And let me add one other thing. And if you pay attention to the Ken Palm ratings, I, I'm a big believer in what Ken Palm already does. The loss for BYU took them from six in the Ken Palm ratings and wait for it, dropped them all the way to eight. Yes, he still thinks they are a top 10 caliber team in his rankings, uh, it, it, according to KenPalm.com. Does that mean they're a top 10 team? They'll be competing for a final four TBD. That There are still a long ways to go on that. I don't think BYU is final four caliber this year. But the nice part is this is a basketball program. It's got a lot of self-belief. They battled back from, a, what was it, 16 or 17 point deficit early on in that second half and had themselves in position to either tie or win this basketball game despite shooting sub 40% from the field and sub sub 25% from three Utah conversely 49.1% uh, uh, for the game. They outshot BYU by a wide margin, but BYU hung tough and they will learn from this. They're going to be able to rely on a game like this. It feels like, and look back on it and uh, be able to kind of dig deep and think, okay, we did this against Utah. We battled back. They're going to find themselves in circumstances in big 12 play where it's going to be similar, if not worse than it was against Utah. And the nice part is I think BYU will benefit having already gone through this experience and suffered a tough loss. They'll say, you know what? 
we're better than this. Let's battle back and let's finish this off the right way. And uh, we'll see how it goes. But I'm expecting BYU to bounce right back against Denver on Wednesday night. The hope is that hangover effect will not even be there for BYU. You roll the Pioneers, bring in Georgia State on Saturday, and then off and roll in as you get ready and geared up for the final push towards Big 12 play. And then, like I said, it's all bets are off. You face off against Cincinnati on January 6th, and man, then it's a two-month gauntlet uh, of games for BYU. And that's when I think the real uh, – test the real metal of this BYU basketball program will be uh, really shown to all of us who watch the Cougar Cagers play. All right, so there you go. That's what I got for you guys on this Monday edition of the podcast. A big thank you once again for your support of the podcast. Please subscribe, rate, review, uh, share it with your friends this Christmas season. You're getting around each other. You got a Cougar fan that you know of that would uh, benefit from this, share it with them. Word of mouth is absolutely critical. You're going to be at all these parties. Let them know about it. Download it on their phone for them. Show them where to get it. And thank you in advance for doing that. Join the subtext community as well. Do yourself a favor and be a part of it. Like I said, it's a really fun way to interact with y'all and I hope you guys will find it of worth in your own right. And of course, thank you for making Locked On Cougars your first listen to the day. And thank you to all of you for being everydayers right here on the Locked On Cougars podcast. See ya.